Okay, so this is what you see when you first open up Max. You'll notice there's just a small window here in the corner. Um, and then you have your menu across the top. Now if you're using a Windows machine, all of this will be contained inside of another window. Uh, what's kind of cool about the software is that you can switch back and forth between a PC and a Mac. Relatively few problems. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new patcher. Now that's what programs are called in Macs. They're called patchers. And a sub window will pop up. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and set the font size to 20. Um, having a font size of 9 is definitely easier to work with when you're working by yourself. Okay, across the top of the window, you'll see a bunch of little icons. Each of these icons is for a different thing that does a different job for you. And they actually extend off of the window, depending on the size of the window, um, with all the different uh, objects. Now they can be broken up pretty much into three classes. Now those are object boxes, which are all the way over here in the corner, right of the mouse. Object boxes are boxes that do something. Uh, message boxes. Message boxes are objects or messages, uh, or objects actually, that send a message, that say something. And comment boxes, which have very little effect on your actual software. Uh, other than to tell people what it is you're working with. Now the other thing about Max that is so cool is that it has a very robust help menu. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take an object box and when I bring it down you'll see that a list, a menu pops up. Now these are some of or the basic uh, elements or basic objects that I can work with. So I'm going to go ahead and under um, math, I'm going to select the add object. Now you see it's just a box with a plus sign. Now if I don't know anything about anything, I don't know what this plus, what this plus sign does for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and go to help and a menu pops up that says help on and this is going to be wicked hard for you guys to see but uh, the help menu actually brings up a patcher where someone has used the object that I am trying to use so uh, the object has two inlets which are at the top and an outlet which is at the bottom so I can connect, I'm going to get met number boxes and I'm going to connect them to this plus box. So I'm taking the first one and I'm going to collect it to connect it to the first inlet here on the left, the second one to the inlet on the right, and I'm going to take the outlet on the bottom and connect that to the number box. Now you guys probably can't see this, but when I put my mouse over an inlet or an outlet on an object, down at the bottom of the screen is a little message that pops up. Let's see if I can get that into focus. Which I can't because it's... There we go. Alright, now that little message tells me what that inlet or outlet is looking for or what it does. All right, so now uh, when I input a number into the, oh, sorry, Max has two modes. Uh, Max has edit mode and play mode. So I'm going to change modes. Um, and I do that by either on a PC it'd be control E or on an Apple it's command E. Now I'm going to put in a number, uh, let's say seven on the right side and you'll notice nothing happens and that's because the left side has to be triggered in order for something to happen so I'm going to put in an 8 and the output is 15 
So that is okay. So we just added two numbers using Max, and now a bunch of you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what that has to do with robotics. So I am going to show you guys how you can use the fidget servo controller with Max. Um, the people who make fidgets have released a library of objects that work in Max, and uh, one of those objects is the fidget servo object. So I'm going to go ahead and type that into this object. Okay. Now here you'll see um, a little you know, fidget servo. When it popped up, um, there's two inlets and one outlet. So I'm going to go ahead and select the object and go to help and then uh, help on fidget servo. Now again, this works exactly the same whether you're working with a Mac or a PC. Um, you know, some of the icons might be in different places and stuff like that, but outside of that, it works exactly the same. Alright, so here you can see the help file um, that comes up, and it's got a nice little you know graphic in the background says what it is, and then it's got all the different options. Okay, so one of them is the get serial, and that spits out a serial number here in this box right there and the other is to get the status and the status is zero and that's because I've got two fidget servo objects open um, now once you have that all connected uh, you can give fidget servo the object certain arguments one would be the motor number and the other is a position that you want that motor uh, number to occupy. Okay, um, and so then you can send it messages to either get the position of the motor or set the position of the motor using message boxes. So I'm going to use a message box and I'm going to type in Sorry about that. So I typed in set motor position, and the motor position I want to change is the motor position zero, and then I put in this funny thing called one string. Now what's really cool, or dollar sign one, um, now what's really cool is that that is the same as using a one dollar sign, it's basically asking for an input, um, and so I'm going to connect a number box to the top of that message box. Now what's going to happen is Max is going to read the number coming in out of the message out of the number box and into this message box. This message box will output the message set motor position all one word zero and then it'll substitute for this number it'll substitute the number coming out of the number box. And then fidget servo this object will recognize that message and then tell the servo controller what position to take. Okay, now I'm going to move the camera so that you guys can see the uh, turntable that I have set up responding to me changing the value in that number box. Alright, so here I have it at 180 and here I have it at zero.